I've owned my Cessna 182 for six years now, and it has absolutely changed my life. I've gotten to go on flying adventures to the mountains of Idaho, the remote parts of Texas, the rolling hills of Arkansas, and more commonly, just go fly to watch the sunrise, which is so fun, and so much more. And I really want to help people own their own airplane. And so for the last six months, I've been filming like crazy, documenting my own experience and recording interviews with my mentors and industry experts on the airplane buying process. Now, I'll share more about the final product of that work at the end, but in the meantime, I wanted to share with you the steps and framework for buying an airplane that came out of all the work of assembling that project. So step one is to determine whether you ought to buy an airplane, rent an airplane, or join a flying club. Now while buying an airplane might sound awesome, it might not actually be the best decision for you yet. And back when I transitioned from renting to buying, there were three things that, that really drove my decision. I kind of call it the three F's of buying versus renting. Probably need a slicker name for that. But it comes down to freedom, frequency, and finances. Essentially, renting is usually easier on the finances side of this because it's predictable and you can control it up or down as you wish. You just rent more or rent less. But you're often limited on how much freedom and frequency you have with the airplane. And eventually there comes a point where for the amount of hours that you wanna fly, owning is actually cheaper than renting or it's similar enough to where the extra cost of owning is actually worth it for the freedom and frequency you get. Now for me, this was at about 80 to 100 hours a year where it was about the same cost to own as it was to rent. But I also got all the freedom of owning an airplane and I could fly whenever I want. I had all the frequency I wanted. But it's gonna be different for everyone based on your budget and based on what that freedom is worth to you. You know, for others, you might only fly 50 hours a year and while renting would be cheaper, it's still worth it to you to own the airplane even though it costs more. Now a side note of owning versus clubs is that if you don't have any sort of aviation community, you don't have any sort of mentorship when it comes to caring for for your own airplane, I think a club might be a really great intermediate step between renting and owning because you can develop a community there that can teach you how uh, to properly take care of an airplane and that might help build your comfort level to then jump out and go out on your own and buy your first airplane. So it's not gonna touch the, the three Fs here, the freedom, frequency, and finances, but it is an added benefit and one you shouldn't discount. Step two, which might sound a little counterintuitive, is to absolutely look into renting a hangar. Now that might sound weird if you haven't actually bought an airplane, why do I need to go rent a place to put the airplane that I don't even own yet? And you might be surprised to find that hangar space is actually pretty pretty rare. And so I would definitely start looking early. You might have to, to look farther than you think or you might even have to get on some wait lists so that by the time you actually do own the airplane, maybe your turn has come and you have access to a hangar. But just don't put that off to the last second. I would actually start there, believe it or not. Step three is to determine your budget. Now, most people think of the budget as just the purchase price of the airplane, but that's definitely not the whole story. Because in fact, I've easily spent the purchase price of my airplane all over again in the last six years of owning it. So budgeting really comes down to a few things and it can be broken down into owning expenses and operating expenses. Now owning expenses basically occur whether or not you even fly a single hour that year and it starts with any payment you might have on the airplane. If you finance your airplane you will have a payment and to figure out what that's going to be you know rates will vary but as a ballpark figure you know you can start with about two percent higher than whatever the current mortgage rates are. I don't want to throw out a number right here because it, it's going to change right but that's a good starting point. The next biggest expense of owning an airplane is probably the annual inspection and this could be a couple thousand dollars or it could be five figures. It really just depends. Now plenty of forums and other owner associations will have people talking about their averages so you can do some research there to come up with some ballpark figures. But I wouldn't put a bare bones figure here. If you see someone saying oh yeah I paid 700 bucks for annual it's like well that's the lowest one I could find so I'll just use that to form my budgeting. I wouldn't do that. I would definitely pad the numbers here especially if you're like in an urban uh, place like I am. I have urban shop rates. It's just a lot more expensive to get my airplane worked on here. You really want to pad the numbers and not and not be so close to the line on your budget that you're gonna be tempted to skimp on maintenance. You don't wanna have maintenance be the thing that you pull back on to fit flying within your budget. Next is your hangar expense. Mine is 560 per month. Ouch. <laughs> but I will say, it's usually a lot less than that for most people. I just happen to be in one of the biggest cities in the country. Dad smack, dab smack, dab smack right in the middle of it. So unfortunately, it's expensive. You'll also have insurance expense. Now, depending on your airplane, your airplane insurance might be less than your car insurance. It really just depends. My 182 insurance has been around 1,000 to about $1,500 per year. And the last will be any subscriptions that you have. These are easy to forget about, but things like ForeFlight and your GPS data subscriptions, associations, these things can quickly add up to 500 or $1,000 in total. So you wanna make sure to include that in your budget because they're easy to forget, but they do add up. Next are operating expenses, and these occur in direct proportion to how much that propeller is spinning. And the first and most obvious 
obvious one is the fuel. So you'll just want to use whatever kind of conservative average uh, hourly burn is for your particular airplane. Obviously, they're going to vary airplane to airplane and engine to engine. So you want to get the right number for your airplane. But then also a really important note here is that I would not just take the regional or state average for whatever fuel prices are at the time, because there's a lot of airports you would never go to to get fuel that are probably bumping this average up. So you just want to zoom in a little more closely and see where am I realistically going to be buying fuel. Like at Addison, I have literally bought fuel like two or maybe three times over the last six years because it's so darn expensive. And so I've just made a habit to fly to other cheaper airports to get my fuel. It was annoying at first, but I've kind of come to appreciate it. If nothing else, it gives me an excuse to fly. So don't forget to uh, just not look at the regional average when it comes to fuel prices. Next is oil changes, and you'll probably be changing the oil in your airplane a lot more often than you do in your car, because you'll be changing the oil every 25 to 50 flight hours or so, or usually every four to six months, whichever comes first. And so if you choose to do this yourself, it's, it's very, very cheap. Even if you pay your shop to do it, it's usually a few hundred bucks or less. Not very expensive, but you're going to be doing it more often than, than you might think uh, compared to owning a car. And lastly is any engine reserve you're setting aside because you might decide to stash away an hourly reserve to save for the overhaul of your engine when it comes time because that's very expensive. Think tens of thousands of dollars. But not everyone chooses to like physically stash this away. And so if you don't, that's not actually going to really impact your monthly budget. But it's worth remembering that and earmarking that. You know, if you keep the airplane long enough, that is a big expense coming down the road. So one way or the other, you want to plan for it. Now, I understand there are a lot of moving pieces here, but these are the high level items. And in my course that I'm going to talk about at the end of this video, I actually have this model already put together for you that makes this budgeting process a lot easier, but those are the main drivers. Step four is to determine the right airplane for you. And the best way to do this is to identify your average mission. And I like to think about it as the six point mission, which is price, useful load, seats, speed, equipment, and performance. Now you'll rarely have an airplane that fits 100% of your mission. So just try to find one that works for the vast majority of your mission. Yes, there will be like two to 5% of your flights that you just can't make with that airplane. But unless your budget is unlimited, that's really something you're gonna have to live with because choosing an airplane is all about trade-offs. Now this is a bit of an iterative process since you might find that the airplane for your mission isn't actually available within your budget. So you'll have to concede on certain items or change your budget. And it's really helpful to know which of these items are non-negotiables, which are those that can't change, and which are just nice to haves. So start with your best guess on all of these and then you'll learn in the research phase if that combination is actually realistic or not and what you need to change on your wish list. Step five, which I haven't heard very many people talk about in terms of this being part of the buying process, a lot of people just do it after the buying process, is to go ahead and join the type clubs and the associations for the type of airplane that you're wanting to buy. So like I'm part of the Cessna Pilots Association and there are many others depending on what kind of airplane you're wanting to buy. And there's a wealth of knowledge in these groups, not only through the forum and the connections you can make, but also all the other resources and meetups and, and all kinds of things that these, that these groups have. And most people join it after they purchase, like I did. But uh, as part of your buying decision, this can be really, really helpful. You can go post and introduce yourself and say, hey, I'm thinking about buying this airplane and just tell them about yourself and say, does anyone have any advice? I think you're gonna find much better advice within a group like this than you are on Reddit or a Facebook group or something, because you're gonna have all kinds of people chime in and Reddit and Facebook groups that might not have ever even owned the airplane, but they want to weigh in on your decision. So I'd rather just get to the source of people who have already done the thing that you're wanting to do, i.e. own this airplane, and they can weigh in on your decision. You might find some really good new friends and even some mentors. Step six is the actual buying process, which starts with looking through listings. Now, the biggest thing here is that as you're going through listings, I really, really encourage you to build out a comparable model. So as you're looking through listings, take the extra two minutes just to write down what you're finding in that listing. You know, the purchase price, the airplane year, um, you know, how much engine time it has on it, what are the avionics like, you know, is there any damage history? There's a lot of things you can fill in this comparable model that can really, really boost your research here to where you're not just kind of, kind of getting these vague trends in your head of, oh, I kind of think this is how airplanes are priced. You're actually gonna have a model with dozens, if not hundreds of aircraft in there to where you can have a really, really good trained eye of spotting a fair deal from like a complete ripoff. <laughs> you should just go nowhere near. And so the biggest thing is a huge wasted opportunity if you don't write down your research. So as you're doing it, make sure to build out a comp model. Next is once you find an airplane you want to pursue, you'll reach out to them and see if the airplane's still available in the first place. And then you'll want to do a logbook review and a pre-purchase inspection. Now, ideally you want your mechanic or someone skilled in 
in this type of airplane to do the inspection and not the existing mechanic for the airplane. This will just help to have a neutral third party to report on the condition of the airplane. Now you might decide that you want to walk away after what you find in this inspection, or you might have some things to negotiate, or hopefully you might be good to go ahead and go forward with the transaction. <laughs> As a side note, could I have said, hopefully any higher? <laughs> I don't think I could have, but hopefully, said a little better, uh, if you're ready to move forward with the sale, it's pretty simple. It's an asset purchase agreement, it's the bill of sale, and then it's a, a, a change of registration form that goes to the FAA. And then usually to change, uh, to actually wire the money, you're usually using a title company like an escrow agent, similar to how you do with a house that can hold the money, they're, they're Switzerland in the process, and they can basically help uh, switch hands of the ownership and wire the money uh, when, when everything is finalized, similar to how you do it on a house. Now there is so much more to the process than this. And remember, I spent the last six months documenting the step-by-step -step process for buying an airplane. Well, I'm going to tell you all about it in the video on the screen. If you're at all interested in buying an airplane, I promise you're going to want to check this out. I'll see you there.